Welcome everyone to the Brethren of the Morning Star YouTube channel. I'm your host, Magister Cankerworm. We're continuing our series today on the seven infernal virtues. And the virtue that we'll be discussing today is the virtue of languor, or what might also be described as idleness, or what classically would have been referred to as sloth. As with all of these, I want to begin with uh, an epigram from the Sermon of the Night Queen, which is part of uh, our book of Infernal Prayer. Quote, You have heard it said, Idleness teacheth much evil. But I say to you, Rest creates time for the work that matters. End quote. The saying goes that necessity is the mother of all invention. But a strong case could be made that is in fact indolence that is the true source of ingenuity. The very drive to invent new tools or more efficient ways of performing tasks often arises from a desire to free up more time that can be used to enjoy more pleasant and fulfilling activities. As the aeronautical engineer and science fiction writer Robert Heinlein said, quote, progress isn't made by early risers. It's made by lazy men trying to find easier ways to do something, end quote. Indolence says, contrary to the Puritan work ethic, that just because something is hard work doesn't in and of itself make that thing good. There are many necessities to survival, but a man's salvation is not found in toiling at the earth any more than a woman's lies within the pain of childbirth. And if you're wondering what I'm referring to there, see the third chapter of the book of Genesis. To be sure, the things that matter to you in your life will often require hard work, whether to obtain them, maintain them, or both. The purpose of idleness isn't to propose that you should never labor for anything. On the contrary, by indulging in periods of slothfulness, you allow your body and mind precious time to restore their energies. The most efficient predators actually spend most of their time lazing about. This allows them to apply all their strength and cunning in a burst of activity when the need arises. Slow and steady may win the race sometimes. But, as Sun Tzu writes in The Art of War, when the door of opportunity opens, you must rush through it with the quickness of a hare. Speed and alacrity are nearly impossible to summon if you're burnt out from constant drudgery. Physically speaking, the largest component to discuss in relation with this virtue is sleep. Globally, more than one-third of adults feel they get an insufficient amount of sleep. Sleep recharges the body, mind, and spirit. It leaves one better equipped to fight off disease, while the lack of or poor quality sleep compromises the immune system. In babies, sleep is when neurological systems do a large portion of their development. Lack of sleep can affect an infant's cognitive and linguistic development, their ability to learn and play, and even lead to mood disorders later in life. While a fully grown adult does not need sleep for the exact same reasons a baby does, since their minds are already developed, they do need sleep to maintain cognitive and physical functioning. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, upwards of 71,000 automobile ac accidents a year are linked to sleep deprivation, causing an average of 1,500 fatalities. In the short term, sleep deprivation impairs attention span and memory, while long-term effects include higher rates of obesity, diabetes, some cancers, depression, and anxiety. Put it simply, diabolists are humans, and humans need sleep. Mentally, idleness not only helps us to deal with stress, but also encourages proper mental functioning. In her article on the benefits of laziness, Anne Laura LeCumph writes, Our mind has two modes of thinking, the diffuse mode and the focused mode of thinking. We need to maintain constant oscillation between the two modes in order to be our most creative and productive. Mind wandering, a form of diffuse, of diffuse thinking, is a useful mechanism for our brains to process information, sometimes leading to non-obvious solutions. Another benefit of letting our mind wander without paying any attention to a productive task 
is a higher focus on long-term goals. And that's end quote. If you have ever realized the solution to a problem while doing something completely unrelated or remembered something once you actively stopped trying to recall it, you've experienced the benefits of diffuse thinking. The quality of your slacking off is as important as quantity, perhaps more so. This goes as much for sleep as it does enjoying one's downtime, which is more languor, languor proper. Sometimes a lazy day in bed or vegetating on the couch can do wonders, but regularly setting aside free time to engage in activities you find enjoyable and stimulating is also a way to make the most of slothfulness. It is easy to let the responsibilities of work, family life, and social activities consume the majority of your waking life. And you can't make the most of your free time if you do not have any to speak of. A devil worshiper who constantly feels burnt out or like they are spending their days running from one obligation to the next should consider restructuring their life and relationships with the aim of carving out more personal time. How drastic that restructuring needs to be will be a matter of individual circumstance and law. You may need to insist on firmer boundaries, protecting your personal time as truly yours. Perhaps you need to step back from certain responsibilities or ask others to carry more of their part of the load. You may need to cut some activities, possessions, or people out of your life entirely. If you recognize that you have an energy vampire sapping your life, and vampires can take a myriad of forms, it's up to you to remove them from it. On the flip side, if your life is nothing but personal time, you are unlikely to get much fulfillment out of it. Not to mention, it will eventually fall apart. Humans have an innate need to belong to social groups and feel like they are a productive and necessary part of the world around them. Just as the devil worshiper shouldn't tolerate relationships that only take and never give anything back, we cannot expect others or reality to tolerate the same out of us. Being a genuine part of other people's lives, members of social systems, and creatures living in physical reality means that we will have demands placed upon us. Relationships have to be maintained, as do societies and physical environments. There is no avoiding that. The trick is to find the right balance between free time and duty with an eye to the long rather than the short term. I don't enjoy doing laundry, but I do enjoy wearing clean, presentable clothing. My preference for the latter requires me to accept the minor annoyance of the former. The goal of every diabolist is to actualize their own divinity and lay claim to their individual sovereignty. But reality is still reality. There's no escaping it and the law of karma, which is just a fancy way of saying the law of cause and effect. Even a master of the temple has to wipe their ass if they don't want to smell like shit. Let us consider the voice of Satan in the psalm, Holy Mountain, from the book of Infernal Prayer. Come, we will go into a high place and look upon the folds of the universe. I behold the world as a treasure, but even my freedom is hemmed in by the strictest of bonds. There is a law written upon the sun and the moon and upon the very atoms of existence. It is growth and entropy, time and space, fire and ice. It is a law which only silence can express. Rebel any time you wish, O sons and daughters of Jehovah. Throw yourselves upon the rocks below. Cast yourself from these heights, and let us put the law to the test. I wish to see the angels of physics arrest your fall with invisible hands. Of course, all the free time in the world won't do you much good if you're too stressed out to enjoy it. If anxiety, tension, or emotional disorder prevents you from fully entering into moments of idleness, you will need to identify and address the roots of these issues. Regular meditation and exercise, along with changes in diet, are all methods of treating the symptoms and increasing your baseline emotional resilience but these should be used in tandem with efforts to alleviate the source of the disturbance itself. This may mean counseling, seeking medication, 
moving to a new residence, finding a new job. Again, vampires can assume a myriad of forms. I realize sources of environmental stress may largely be, or at least feel, to be outside of one's control. Hearing someone say something like, you should speak to a counselor, or if you hate your high crime neighborhood, you should move, may seem laughable. If you're in severe poverty and or dependent on an abusive lover, you're legitimately afraid to leave or otherwise feel stuck where you're at. There are often no easy answers for these sorts of situations. Finding a way out of them, whatever it takes, should likely become your highest priority. Accept that change takes time. Remember that surviving is not the same as living, and it is more commendable from a satanic perspective to risk it all for a better life rather than slavishly accepting what fate has handed to you. Ultimately, languor, languor is resting in the sheer pleasure of simply being alive. The battles of life are never ending. Let those precious moments of rest prepare and rejuvenate you for even greater endeavors and more glorious struggles ahead. Once again, I'm Magister Cankerworm. I want to thank you for, for listening. And we'll see you next time.